All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a, well, not really take anything, but we're going to interview a couple people that got some stuff going on at the Manchester, New Hampshire Reptile Expo. So stick around. One, two, three, four. So in this video, I didn't really do a whole walkabout up there. Uh, I was really on a mission. Uh, quick look at our table. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, two tables at the uh, Manchester, New Hampshire Reptile Expo in Manchester, New Hampshire. If you didn't catch that part, um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk to Monroe Morphs and we're gonna talk to JPC Boas in this video. And uh, be easy on me, guys. This is my first go around at any kind of interviews, uh, but we can take a look at some cool stuff and uh, we get a, a good talk into a couple people. So stay right there. All right, everybody, so this is a buddy of mine, Dan Monroe of Monroe Reptiles, Monroe Morphs, I'm sorry. So as I said in the last time I went around, we were gonna start doing some interviews. So this is one of the first ones, so if it's a little funky, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me because I'm new to this, and I think you are too. Absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit um, about what you focus on and uh, where you wanna go with your business? Pretty much right now, just doing a little bit of everything, trying to figure out what to really focus on and starting to do that. Uh, really liking the fire stuff. Plan to work that into a lot of things. Orange Dream, GHI next year. Uh, but this year was really starting with fire and some dinker projects that should uh, pan out after a couple of sheds. We'll see what's going on. Excellent. Well, there you have a little bit from Dan. And now you guys are gonna take a quick look at his table, what he has available here at the New Hampshire Reptile Expo. So mm -hmm. stick around and you guys are gonna see some more stuff coming your way. All right, guys, so one more interview for this episode. And um, today we're with uh, JPC Boas, and we're gonna let you introduce yourself. We're gonna have, um, we're gonna take a quick look at a couple things on the table here. But, um, so I know it says Boas uh, up there, but primarily what do you guys focus on? What do you do? But mainly Boas and ball pythons, but mostly red tail Boas, yeah. How long have you guys been in the snake game? Joe, the owner, he's been doing it for 15, 20 years. I've been doing it for eight to nine years, I would say. Nice, yeah. nice. So you also primarily bows with yeah, Joe? Yeah, I just do bows. Excellent. So 
So one thing on the table you guys are really excited about, is there something you wanna we maybe do, tell we, everybody about? We think that we've created a new line of albino ism for uh, the boas, so we can check that out if you want. Yeah, absolutely. So so with this line, before we take a look, is it compatible with both like call strain and sharp, or do you know So yet? far, we think it's compatible with call. We're gonna try it with sharp this year for the first time, so hopefully we'll find out soon. Fantastic, all right, so stick right there. We're gonna take a look at some new strain of albino in the boa world and take a look at some ball pythons and other things they have on the table so all right so with this animal here what can you describe what's a little bit different that you may be seeing in this this albino line or so basically what's mostly weird about is we bred a uh, head albino to an albino and instead of getting normal looking albinos we got seven of these and we got five normals which we presume are head for this so basically it's got a little bit different albino eyes. Let me see if I can get them in white and red. So this year, what we did is we bred the grandfather of this snake back to the mother, and we produced half of the litter that looked like this and half of the litter that looked like this. So what we're thinking is some kind of recessive, maybe like a candino parasite. Oh yeah, so something allylic that may sit with the both of them, yeah. So we're going to try breeding the father of this one with a sharp loss and we'll see if it will be compatible with sharp loss. Yeah, so we'll definitely have to do a follow-up with you guys on this line and see what comes out of that uh, sharp strain and see if it is something that's uh, truly allylic with the other two. That'd be cool. So this is uh, one of our creamsicle line sunglows. So basically it's a sunglow kraken, but as an adult, this whole animal will turn completely orange. I don't know if you can see the sides are turning orange. Oh yeah. And then the top is starting to get a few pink flecks, but our adult creamsicles are pretty much as orange as this tablecloth is. Wow. Yeah, that one's gorgeous too. So now, and you have to forgive me because I'm more into the ball pythons, starting to get some of boas. Yep. But is this is this a, a call? Yes, this is call. This is call. Yeah. Wow. Uh, got some pretty wild eyes. Yeah, you can see the crazy slits on there. And she looks good. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at another one here, and then we're uh, gonna take a sneak peek at maybe some of these ball pythons I got here too. So this is a, a SIMG, which is kind of like the IMG for the Sonoran leopards. Yeah. This is a SIMG hypo pet sunglo leopard, hypo jungle. I'm sorry. So potentially you can make jungle leopards with this. So thing. this one, well, with IMG, they they typically will go black or really really dark over time. A lot. So that this do the same. Similar. It won't get quite as dark, especially because it's a hypo. If it was uh, like a visual leopard SIMG, those get very very black. Yeah. But um, the babies, like especially the sunglows and albinos, will look a lot more impressive when you have that in there. You know, one or two more, and that's it. Year. Yeah, dude, that speckling on that side is just crazy. It's a horrible year. I had 15 litters of slugs. That oh, looks really good, man. Right, so this one's kind of a treat. You don't get to see a lot of these. Um, you want to explain to us what we got here? So this is a ball python. It's called a gray matter. Basically, it's a super cinnamon champagne ball python. And the blushing right behind its head is just really, really cool. Everybody always thinks these are pies. Well, that's, you know, the, well, the pie is what I just want to Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you mix the cinnamon, all of our cinnamon champagnes have like a little white on them like that. No, this is just the regular. Yeah, this is the lesser. Right. 
All right, guys, so I'm back with Noah, and just to wrap this up, um, so if you guys want to check out that new line of Albino and check these guys out, uh, they're got, they have a website, you guys on Facebook? Facebook, Instagram. You want to uh, give JPC your plugs Boas. for those? Yeah, just, just look us up, JPC Boas, on Instagram or Facebook. Our website's jpcboas.com. We'll be updating it with the 2018 babies pretty soon once they have a few more meals. And then. Excellent, excellent. So Noah, thank you very much, and thank Joe for us as well. And uh, yeah, definitely check these guys out and look at that new line of albino. There's going to be some cool things coming. Uh, you said there's no name for that yet, right? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So follow them, follow us. Uh, we tend to kind of be on a similar circuit for shows. So once they start uh, breeding it this year and see if it's compatible, we're definitely going to be back following up with these guys. Thanks. Well, as you can see, I've got a long way to go if I'm going to do interviews. So. Yeah, it was a little bit rushed. I, I got We got up there a little late. I got a late start, so I didn't have the time to uh, really go through some of the tables really thoroughly. But man, some of that stuff that um, JPC is working on, that albino stuff, that would be cool. If that proves out as a separate strain of albino in those boas and is cross-compatible with call and sharp, um, that'll be a game changer in that industry. And they had some, that gray matter was pretty cool too, and then the lesser gray matter. So, um, again, thanks for coming along. Thanks for checking out the video. And we'll see you on the next video. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take you along as we do a couple interviews at the Manchester... All right, guys, we're going to take you along on this...